Hi there, in this video I'm giving you 3 tips on how to solo an attack helo. You may be wondering how to handle the workload of 2 pilots, and it's simple, you don't. At least not at the same time. If you're flying nap the earth, then the gunner won't be able to spot much through the tree lines and has much less to do. Similarly, if you're in a hover or trimmed out flight, the pilot has less to do while waiting for the gunner to refine aim on the targets and take the shot. On a rocket run, it's also pretty much all the pilot flying and timing the launch. Tip 1. Flow. The shark was designed around these flows of handing over activity, almost like flying in DCS two-seater aircraft where you shift seat and an air controls the other functions. Or like a human pilot saying, you got it, and the gunner replying, I got it, when handing over control of the aircraft, except here you're switching roles or modes with a push of a button. Just your co-pilot, Rubicon, is literally a machine. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop, ever, until your enemies are dead. Key to this is having your flight trim to be stable and mostly pointing in the right direction. If your airframe is bobbing and yawing around like crazy, don't switch to aiming yet. You could be in a hover, side slip, climb, orbit, forward flight, whatever, as long as you're not bobbing and shaking around or about to drift into a tree or wingman, you can then switch roles. This means you should be able to leave pressure off the stick and collective and you're not thinking of piloting anymore, at least for a few seconds. Maybe you could still be holding a pedal position, but ideally you don't need to be making constant corrections with your pedals anymore. This is one reason I don't advocate the flight director as your go-to for combat. Having it on, your trimmed flight path won't be as stable and you'll have to return to piloting and doing corrections to your flight sooner so you can't go heads down as long. If you're doing a bad job trying to pilot while acquiring and shooting, then don't. Get the one thing done right, done properly, then hand it off to the systems and switch your focus. Tip 2 pre-planning. Here I'm flying nap of the earth. I've chosen to put an altitude hold keeping my radar altitude which will keep me off the ground if I'm not going too fast and the terrain doesn't rise up too quickly. I could just have it fly itself up crumbed as is but also choose to put on route mode. Now it literally flies the route itself. All I need to do is occasionally glance up and if there's a tree the route isn't avoiding, without holding trim, which would disrupt the route mode, I just gently push the cyclic and maybe pedals to drift around the trees. Then slowly release the controls again afterwards, having route mode do its thing. Most of the time I'm giving no pressure to the controls and I'm not even thinking about piloting. I can easily navigate using the indicators on the HUD, HSI or ABRIS. But now I also have more focus to give to radios and looking out the window for other threats. I've also got intel on where to expect the Shilka. So there's a target point in the area. You can tell your shark to automatically fly to target points and dialing targets and they can speed up acquisition by putting a shval on it. This is especially good at night when you don't have your helmet sight. Approaching the last waypoint, I turn off root mode. Just check my trim is still good, then select my target point. My HUD and HSI show the direction I should line up with, as well as distance. And I can see the ABRIS, which forest clearing it should be, and what to expect visually. Now I can uncage the shawl straight there. Here I start piloting again. Hold trim get into a climb with the nose pointing at the target and once it's stable I release trim and stop piloting again. I'm now heads down looking for the target with a slew hat. 
once I find it, lock it up. Or at least I need to be range near it for the rockets to range. Now I'm back on piloting to get the rocket prepper aligned. Luckily I hit the shulker on the first volley. I just wish this bug would be fixed whereby the rockets give recoil but eh. One thing to note, if your head's down the schwall and you see the angle of the terrain change, then you know you're still changing altitude. This effect will be more subtle if you zoomed into something far away. And your screen only shows altitude if you're below 50 meters. So keep tabs on maybe climbing too high this way if you don't want to glance away at your instruments. Now that was some ways of handing off control all switching seats so to speak and how to alleviate your load when you have a pre-planned route and target points or dead link targets. Now even if you can't lay down routes and target points it's still not a bad idea to have a plan in your head of if I get shot at or lose both engines right now what would I do? That way you're not in a panic looking for a clearing to auto-rotate to or where good cover is. Step 3. Use your helmet sight when it's comfortable. So, what if it's not pre-planned? That's when stuff like the helmet mounted sight comes in handy. You can directly lock up targets with your helmet mounted sight. But if there's a lot of maneuvering in your helo or changing angle, that will be harder. So just put the sight near the target. Tap on cage. Now forget about the helmet and use the slewing hat and IT-23 screen or the HUD circle to get on target. That's if you need to. On a rocket run you just need to tap and gauge near the target so you get a ranging. Now you can fly the pepper on target without worrying about getting the schwall pinpoint accurate. You can also use the helmet to get you flying somewhere before you've had time to capture the coordinates. Look it up or even get your bearings. Just uncage your helmet sight over the target. You don't even need to range. Or if you're trying to get somewhere on your Abris, get the yellow line near the destination. Now flick on auto turn and root mode. If your laser's off, as it generally should be when you're not using it, and you uncage in the sky, the line goes into infinity, so it's very easy to intersect something on your map turn if you need to get the destination in front of you or just have that yellow line spin around as it banks the craft until it can intersect the destination. You've just navigated by using your head without the head math. Congratulations. Now you can go mess around with the Abris to set a two destination to get a distance and estimate time of arrival or import coordinates into your PVI. Then again, you can eyeball distances in your Abris map scale and MGRS grid blocks. So, you might not even need to do all that inputting. If you're free of obstacles and wingmen, you can even completely heads down and just keep nudging the slew hat yourself to turn you around to some Abris feature. If you need to set up an impromptu emergency airport or head towards an MGRS grid for immediate close air support, this gets you flying there quickly while you write down situation reports and coordinates. Note with a slewing hat, it only changes your heading once you leave the slew hat. So if you want to start turning sooner, just leave the hat and once it starts banking, then continue slewing. Obviously the helmet is fastest for making big adjustments, even asking for 90 degree turns, which it will do in a gradual and controllable probably 15 degrees bank level. If you're going slowly enough, you could even use auto turn and root mode with a helmet to fly your nap of the earth. Without needing to worry about your collective position or slipping down lower as you bank. A second pilot would be useful, no doubt. I guess especially in a more modern complex battlefield with drones, ground radar, electronic warfare, day links to multiple vehicles outside of your helicopter formation, aerial recon, commander roles you may be taking up while managing multiple radios. Also, if you had sensors that could scan sideways while the pilot still needs to look forward-ish to avoid obstacles, second guy would be useful. But the shark was designed for a simpler time, so you don't have those needs as much. 
out in DCS with only a virtual life to spend. It also means you get to have all the fun for all the functions in one flight without having to worry about finding a multi-crew human or wondering what that bot is doing at any given moment. You don't get the initiative of a second seater, but you know exactly what the other seat is doing at all times. So, in recap, do one thing, do it right, one at a time. And especially with a piloting part, get yourself stable and facing the rough direction of the target before moving on. This is easier if you're not too close or fast. If your head's down navigating and not using a fall or flying too fast, put it in scan mode. It will night rider and sail on away, scanning left to right. Now if you're looking at instruments and happen to see something on your screen out of the corner of your eye, you can double back and slew hat to check it out. But you're not using your focus to move it around. I do always recommend using the helmet sight to scan around manually yourself, which feels intuitive, but this is a way to offload if you need to. Secondly, you can preload things like target points and routes that helps flying your route or at least showing it on your HUD. As well as doing the early stages a gunner would by estimating a distance to the target and getting the scope in that general area, though you are still needed for the final IDing and targeting. Lastly, use the helmet sight when it makes sense. So when you're stable and not changing angle to the target too fast, or if you need to navigate somewhere quickly and easily. Often one can use the sight between stick adjustments, so just after you trim then, as now you have predictable movement, even if the angle is changing. If the sight looks like it's bouncing around, don't try to hold it uncaged and get it on target. Just tap on cage when it's near target or destination and then immediately switch to the slewing hat. As you get more skilled, you learn to switch these flows faster. You learn how to get coordinated and controlled flight so it doesn't buck around as much and trim stable more rapidly. You also start getting a better feel of what's good enough when switching roles. With rockets, you also just need a ranging near the target rather than lock on the forehead. The cannon you could just slew around with your head tracking if you're stable. Also, you'll find that you have less stressed or pre-prepared situations. You can literally do both piloting and gunning at the same time if you wanted to. This is Volk. Trust the machine. Its mission is to protect you. It is there to obey your every command, even the ones that will self-terminate. All you have to do is give the right command at the right time and you won't get overwhelmed. Happy hunting.